I am interviewing Mrs. Catherine Nielsen, who is uh, a social worker by training and who was head of the Crittenden Agency in Los Angeles County for several years. Um, I will let her speak to the history of her own employment, but in the meantime, she had an interesting presentation that she can make where I will interrupt periodically with questions. I, the interviewer, am Agnes Trincaro, and I have had the background of being a social worker as well. And at one time, I was so, uh, the executive director of the San Francisco Crittenden and also of the one in, Los An in Orange County. Now to Mrs. Nielsen. I'm Catherine Nielsen. Uh, my first association with Florence Crittenden was as a social worker in, in 1955. In 1957, I was temporarily named executive director when the then director had an illness and was definitely incapacitated. This presentation was made to the board of directors who wanted to, who really wanted to know something about the history of Florence Crittenden and particularly about the Los Angeles Agency. Florence Crittenden in America is the oldest private social service agency still in existence. Charles Crittenden, a wealthy drug manufacturer, founded the agency in 1883 in memory of his little daughter Florence, who died at the age of three. His vast fortune was dedicated to, in his words as he said, saving the sorrow of girlhood. At the time, the idea of unmarried pregnancy was considered a, quote, sin and he was a devoutly religious man who established these rescue missions to save the girls from their lives of sin and prostitution. Was, Catherine, was the rescue mission the name of the organization? Yes, the rescue mission was the original name on Bleecker Street in New York. <clears throat> he bought a private car and attached it to railroads across the country named the car the good news and preached his gospel of, of redemption in various cities coming to Los Angeles in, in um, 1892 among the audience was a was a Presbyterian minister Reverend Stevens who heard him preach and donated his home on Santee Street in Los Angeles for the first Florence Crittenden mission and rescue home is that the same area where the agency is now located? No, no, it is not. Now, the agency is now located at 234 East Avenue 33, Los Angeles. That building came into existence in 1913. During that period of time, from the original Santee Street address until the, the um, agency was moved to Avenue 33, Florence Crittenden Agency in Los Angeles went through some very difficult times. The, um, finally, in 1913, there was a newspaper appeal for, for funds, and the largest gift ever made to any Florence Crittenden home was given to Los Angeles by a Mr. O.T. Johnson, a wealthy businessman in Los Angeles. He donated $75,000 for a new building on a five-acre tract on the outskirts of the city. That tract is now Avenue 33. And that is where the agency now is? The agency is, is, exists there yet. Eight months later, the building was occupied. At the beginning, there was fierce opposition to the home by the community, but by the time of its dedication, April 11, 1915, the bitterest opponent had furnished three of the bedrooms. This is the kind of the kind of appeal to the volunteer in, in the Los Angeles area at that time. The agency was totally supported by private donations. There was no involvement of the uh, of any government agency. A name to remember in the 1920s and 30s was that of Dora Shaw Hefner. H-E-F-F-N-E-R. She was a, a practicing attorney, a very interesting woman, director of the Los Angeles Community Welfare Federation, and this included all social service agencies. She was a referee of the juvenile court in Los Angeles, 
And finally, the Chief of the State Social Services. Mrs. Hefner was president of the Los Angeles Board of Directors for many, many years. Uh, when did she become head of the state social services? That sounds like we're getting into. I, I don't have the, the, re, the date support. of that. Yes, it was. That was the beginning. She was very active in in civic affairs and in um, in all all the beginnings of involvement in welfare planning councils in Los Angeles. I see. But we're looking now at an agency had its own origins in what, 18 what? 18, 1883, so and in Los was, Angeles in 1892. I see. 1883 yeah. is, how did it ever get started in the first place, nationally? Well, that, nationally, with Charles Crittenden established these homes across the country and even in Europe, in Tokyo, in Brussels, and I think in Paris before World War I. Mm -hmm. And he had a motivation, didn't he? His motivation was to save the girls from their life of sin. And he had a daughter? His, it, Florence Crittenden nationally is dedicated to the memory of his little daughter Florence, who died when she was three years old. There we are. Yeah. And what established any kind of an organizational um, position for him? You when mentioned I, Congress? Yeah, well, at the beginning, he worked with a, with a um, another minister's family, the Barrett family, and, he, and Mrs. Barrett, Kate Waller Barrett, became his, really his um, mentor. And she went across the country helping establish and organizing the area, various Crittenden agencies. And she had a nursing background. She had a nursing background herself, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, she, and her family continued in the tradition, her son and her daughter-in-law, continued in the tradition until their deaths very recently, within the, in, I believe in the 1980s. So the actual um, organization itself then had the blessing of Congress in what way? 1898, Congress passed, uh, we, we were, they passed an, an ordinance, Los, uh, Crittenden and the Boy Scouts, I think, are the only two that have, have been passed by, by an act of Congress. It was a charter? Yes, a charter, mm -hmm. yes. Interesting part of history. It's an interesting so then, part of history. Reviewing for a moment, the charter was issued in 1898, I believe. And mm -hmm. then he made a trip across yeah, the country. Across the country to it, impress uh, the in, nation in his in his railroad car, which I mentioned earlier. Yeah, privately oh, mm -hmm. financed by him. Privately financed by him, and uh, he wherever he went, he made a sizable donation to establish. An agency in that, in a that home city yes, for girls home. who yes. did, had no one else. Who That's right. Help them. Yes, and was it always focused on pregnant young people? Not always, but most mm -hmm. of the time it was. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were considered girls considered without girls any without. Yes, alone in, in a city. At that time, there was a, a quite an influx of young girls coming into the urban communities from farm communities, and were picked up by various kinds of of. Um, People who were people who were using exploiting them. them. Yeah, exploiting mm -hmm. them. Yeah, exactly. And yes. so this was a rescue. That's why this he was called a, it a rescue mission. Rescue That's mission. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was in California then to review a moment uh, when he did allocate. He had this other minister approach him about a donation of a home. Of the home. That's right. So that the same program or a program could get started in, in, Los, in Angeles. Los Angeles. And that was exactly when? 1893. 1893. Right. 1893. Yeah. So that's, it's one of, you say, the oldest? It is one of the oldest. I think it's the second oldest. In the United States. Yes, in the United States, yes. All right. And yeah. remembering, of course, the... Yeah. Era that we're talking about. That we're about. talking about, yes. Uh, it was handled primarily on a medical basis, was it not? Yes, yes. It was handled on a medical basis and a very religious basis. Religion and, 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 and good medical care. Good medical care, yes. So mm -hmm. that the employees were mainly? Most of them nurses. nurses. Yes. And also, um, did you not tell me that at one point also the deliveries were done right in the home? In in the in the agency, exactly. The Los baby. Angeles Florence Crittenden delivered babies in the agency mm -hmm. uh, until late in the fifties. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yes. And early in the in the, in the time, Dora Cheryl Hefner was president of the board in 1932. Uh, the agency was in very deep trouble. Uh, Florence Crittenden was about to be closed. The girls were considered mistreated. Medical care was less than adequate. And closing was mandatory unless conditions changed dramatically. Um, 
Mrs. Hefner immediately appointed a, a, a nurse, Ruth Swallowstuen, S-W, should I spell that, do you think? Mm -hmm. S-W-E-L-S-T-U-E-N. She was a chief obstetrical nurse at the California Lutheran Hospital. She, had, she held this position until 1959 when illness forced her to, into retirement, and I was asked to fill the position. From 1932 until September 17th, when her illness occurred, changes had occurred in the world, certainly, and certainly in Los Angeles. The uh, World War had changed the whole culture. Los Angeles was no longer the slow-paced western town. We were, in many ways, the pace setter for the country. The population exploded with a number of, of uh, youngsters becoming pregnant. And the need for an agency like Florence Crittenden was very, very great. Value systems changed. Adoption suddenly became the most approved method for the girls who were having children out of wedlock. However, at that time, families of the girls paid all the bills. There was no involvement from government or any kind of, of social service agency. If a girl didn't have the funds, then what? The agency carried her. She was never turned away. That was part of Mr. Flor Mr. Crittenden's philosophy. Mm -hmm. No girl must ever be turned away. And in Los Angeles, that was true. So the collection was from private from donations. Private, yes. And, and referrals and came from doctors, from ministers, from priests, from rabbis. Uh, it was totally private. There was no government involvement of any kind. Okay. Let's stop now for a moment. Now, go ahead. Oh, well, let's see. Now we can continue. Yeah. <clears throat> let's see. The scenario in 1955 at Florence Crittenden ran something like this. The population was 32 pregnant teenagers, all of them white, all of them middle class. Not one girl was placed by social services or probation department. Two-thirds were referred by obstetricians and ministers. All but one girl placed her baby for adoption. The total budget for that fiscal year was just under $45,000. The staff numbered eight. Four lived in, in the agency itself, working 24 hours on and 24 hours off, seven days a week. All babies were delivered on the premises. When a cesarean section was indicated, Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital was our affiliation. We were a member of the Western Hospital Association of America. A great name associated with Los Angeles Florence Crittenden is William Benbow Thompson, Chief of Obstetrics at Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital. He was probably the most famous obstetrician in the West, and he was a chief of staff at Florence Crittenden for over 20 years. The residents at Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital became our chief delivering doctors. And many of them became board members of Florence Crittenden as they finished their professional training. Ruth Swallowstew directed this, this large group of young men as well as the staff on grounds. And were we still talking entirely on the medical group? Or were there social workers involved? Oh, at this time, there were no social workers. I was the first social worker ever hired by Florence Crittenden in Los mm -hmm. Angeles. And What the, did you do as a social worker at that point? Did you have particular duties that were different than the nursing duties and the medical duties? Well, yes, I worked with the families. I worked with the, 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 the young man involved with the girl. Mm -hmm. And relationships became very, very close and very warm between the families and the agency. Mm -hmm. Many of the girls as, were placed by very, very wealthy families, and I think the uh, 
continuing relationship with Crittenden resulted in many of them becoming board members and becoming leaders in the community. And donors. And probably. donors for the agency, yes. Okay. It sounds like the agency on the whole really directed its attention mainly to um, middle class middle class and exactly and other there people were very, who were able to afford to some afford, of the expenses. Yes, yes, that's very mm -hmm. true. Now, in 1950-59, when I became director, we moved into a different world. At that time, at least from 1956 until 1968, our board president was Charles Fleischman, a leader in the community, who was a brilliant raconteur. He was a dedicated uh, businessman, generally a great benefactor to, to Florence Crittenden in Los Angeles. And during the years of growth and movement from a medical facility into a more professional ser social service agency, he was at the helm of Florence Crittenden. The morning of Miss Wallace Stewart's illness, the staff was totally in a state of chaos. She had not shared ever where any of the supplies were. No one had a key for anything. It was a, it was a time of, of total chaos. The board of directors pulled themselves together, came over to the agency in, in about an hour, and everyone was reassured, and I was temporarily placed as the director. Now, prior to that, you were the social worker. I was the social worker. And you were assisting the director. Yes, yes, yes I was assisting the director. Mm -hmm. And um, was beginning to have groups of parents and, and the young people, sometimes the young men, the fathers of the babies, would join the groups. Mm -hmm. This was a totally different kind of service. Uh, and branching out in less medical into more social services. Was that accepted by both the board and the Yes, the leadership? board was very enthusiastic about this. And the it, director. Yes, uh -huh. they certainly were. Comprehensive changes occurred, of course, in the 19, late 1960s. With the changes in, in our culture, the civilization changed in, in every way. And we, we began to see a different kind of, of uh, girl coming in. Would you say also attitudes about sexuality? Were attitudes altering. about sexuality, yes, yes, we'll, we'll get into that. The staff of eight grew to 30 plus, and the population in 1968 were 57 in residence. As compared with? As compared to a 30. Earlier. Which was the usual, years ago, was the usual complex. Mm -hmm. During this time, a great surge in volunteer support occurred. We, uh, there were, I believe at one time, 17 auxiliaries or circles devoted to supporting the agency. Again, these are volunteers with no government money supporting them. However, during this time, a slow influx of more girls placed by Department of Social Services and probation began to occur, and we began to see a different kind of child coming to Florence Crittenden. That implies that there was an ongoing organization in the public sector that then led to the possibility of referrals to the private sector. Yes, they certainly and did. And you mentioned that there was a referrals from public welfare, etc. Yes, yes, this is the beginning um, of that. It would be important to track, I think, when those organizations were actually organized and were available so that this private agency could have a relationship with them. Do you, do you have Are any you speaking of the, of the public agency? Yes, yes, yes. You mentioned the public agencies. What were they? Certain departments that referred the Department of Social Services, the Child Welfare Division, All right. and probation. I see juvenile probation. And this is yes. implying that during this early period, there already was a public interest, a public interest in caring yes. for yes. some of the children who were not otherwise yeah. uncovered by private funds. By this time, National Florence Crittenden had organized a national organization, and there was a beginning 
of a consciousness of the need for expansion of social services. Mm -hmm. Social workers were beginning to be hired throughout the country in all of Florence Crittenden agencies, and there was a need to begin to link up with the, with the public agencies mm -hmm. because the need was growing greater and greater. Mm -hmm. But in Los Angeles during this period, our volunteer supported, supporters promoted a kind of phenomenal benefit. We had antique car shows, a, a country fair at the Bothwell Ranch, who was then our president of the board, a diamond jubilee at the Coconut Grove Hotel, premieres of Camelot, Mary Queen of Scots, plus many, many individual benefits, and a great deal of money was raised privately again. Mm -hmm. So always at Florence Crittenden there was this dual, this mutual support of public and private agencies. Mm -hmm. This was particularly uh, true, I think, with the beginnings of, the, of a thrift shop which was started by one of the board members and which was a source of, of a continual source of support for us. What happened to the original um, impact of religious thinking and training that was the earlier motivation? from Charles Crittenden in working with the girl. What happened to that aspect? Well, I think as the, as the culture changed and as Florence Crittenden became more involved with the public agencies, uh, less and less emphasis was placed on the religious aspect. And it was always a non-sectarian agency. It was always a non-sectarian agency. And into the 60s, there was less and less religious overlay with the agencies, as was proper working with the public agencies, as we did. Gradually, um, as the culture changed and the kind of girl changed that we were caring for, uh, we, we had to move into this kind of... of uh, what would you say were the characteristics that were more um, impressive in when you mentioned the type of girl and the change in the type of girl? What were the differences? Well, at the time, in the late 60s and into the early 70s, I think the tremendous changes in society affected the kind of girl that, uh, that we had. Traditional values were overthrown. The abortion law came into, uh, in, was, was passed, and uh, the communes were flourishing, and uh, there was an entirely different kind of uh, sexual liberation. Instead of a, a, a disgrace and a, and a time to be hiding from society, many of the pregnancies were flaunted as kind of a badge of honor, and there was a, a great great change among attitudes in young people. Uh, there was a more pervasive attitude on the part of the family, and the uh, family was no longer the bulwark against society. Uh, these children were really um, rebelling against society. Did and when this happened, a tremendous change affected the agency. From a population of 50-some girls uh, we dropped immediately down to about 25, and this was in the, in the early 70s. And from 90% placing for adoption, 98% uh, were keeping their children. And Florence Crittenden began to wonder where was our role in, in this big picture, so, so changed. The dis degree of disturbance among the girls was very high. They were uh, no longer children from an intact family. Many of them were children who were abandoned and who had been sexually abused themselves, and they were angry. Uh, Ernest Crittenden Board and, and I faced this dramatically changed population and wondered how can we best fit into, the, into this new world. It's difficult to explain how much support the board of directors gave to me during this time because we were floundering, finding, trying to find a way to keep the agency serving the community in the best way possible. And after much soul searching, we decided that the service should begin to include mothers and babies on the premises. And under Mrs. Lindley Bothwell's leadership, Anne Bothwell, uh, we did make the change. We were the first agency in America 
to include mothers and babies as well as non-pregnant girls in a service that was that diversified under one roof. Many agencies in Los Angeles questioned this, but there was great support from the Children's Residential Center Association, an agency Florence Crittenden had joined some years before. And, and after, that was statewide. It was statewide, yes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and represented many agencies, many agencies that were working doing in all doing children serving children. children in many different ways. That's right. Um, at this time, there was national interest because many Florence Crittenden agencies were closing because of the very kinds of conditions described in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And national and interest and was their restricted programs. Yes, restricted mm -hmm. programs, and national interest apparently became so great that. Uh, Florence Crittenden, Los Angeles, was uh, interviewed on 60 Minutes, a national uh, television program. When was that? That was in 1970. I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result of that, was several... seen as avant-garde agency yes, that had taken yes. on. Yes. This was a this was a bold problem. step for Los Angeles to take, and it was with some trepidation and a sense of risk that we did it. Mm -hmm. But uh, apparently, it was really needed. Um, at that time, because of the, of the rapid change, uh, the population began to grow rapidly, and there was a need for expanded services. And in 1970, uh, an addition to the building was dedicated in April of um, National Florence Crittenden Day in uh, 1970. There was a, a period following that dedication of the new building and the new, the new population. Uh, service was rocky. There was many times. There were many times when uh, we were finding our way, but we were still leading the nation in terms of this diversification of services. And those Florence Crittenden agencies, still in existence, have all diversified their service. Several of them, however, have closed. This is throughout the United States. This is throughout the United States, yes. Now, in California, there are two others? There are two others. There's a, um, I believe San Francisco was established a few years before Los Angeles. I think that was one of the very right. early ones. Mm -hmm. And in Orange County in 1968, mm -hmm. uh, it was in Orange County. And they are still? They are still in existence, in yes. Mm -hmm. And, and I believe doing a diversified, many of them now having foster families as part of their services. Mm -hmm. And Los Angeles at the present time has foster families and an aftercare service. Mm -hmm. And do all of them approach the fact that we're dealing with teenage girl problems at times? It's more than just a pregnant girl. That's yes, right. that's and a very so good there's description. there's a mixture of the population. Teenage girl problems, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Many of the agencies are trying to work with the alleged father if the girl is pregnant. Mm -hmm. But the, this, for the most part, the, uh, the kinds of counseling going on in the Florence Crittenden agencies are to severe dysfunctional families. Mm -hmm. And do I understand, too, that some of the girls themselves often are on the edge of mental health issues yes. that really are old and need work? Very, very, very seriously disturbed girls. Yes. So what did that do in terms of the staffing patterns? Who were the people that you found necessary to include as the uh, interdisciplinary team? Well, they're, they're, there's usually a psychiatrist as a, as a consultant mm -hmm. and sometimes a psychologist for testing, uh, a team of social workers, hopefully an MSW, all MSWs are licensed social workers, a team of child care workers, uh, the necessary medical support, which is much less than at the beginning of the services throughout the country. Uh, deliveries always in a, in a hospital. Florence Crittenden now delivering at Cedars of Lebanon Hospital. Uh, there's a totally different approach to serving this child today, many of whom are as young as 12 and 13. And very, very often not able to reach into the family so that you're dealing only with an isolated child who is in very deep trouble. Mm -hmm. 
And did I understand also that there's been um, elaboration of how to train these girls and that the school programs are also included? There are, in almost every Florence Crittenden agency across the country, there is an auxiliary school program, an integral part of the service. Mm -hmm. many, of, many of the girls have had failures in school all their lives, and this sometimes is the first time they have any sense of accomplishment and, and achievement. The school is a very important integral part of the service. And are these schools uh, contracted with the ongoing school, public schools in Some, existence? Most of them are. There are various ways of doing it. Los Angeles, I believe, now has a, a dual kind of contract. Mm -hmm. They have their own school plus contracting with the Los Angeles School District. I see. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is a continual uh, flowing back and forth between the public and private sector. I see. Uh, did you have anything more you'd want to add in terms of what you see as prospectively what's still needed in terms of the services that I this think, population I think as time requires. goes on and we find uh, society becoming more different, the structure of the family is totally different today than it was in you know, 1950. Um, and I think the need for for trained social workers to do this job is of absolutely the most important. That is the most important service that they do, mm -hmm. that they can give. Mm -hmm. I think I have heard in uh, talking with you as well as some other people currently working with this population that there's still a piece that seems to be missing, and that is that the age 18 should not remain a cutoff it's date it, it's for suddenly a helping cutoff date some of these uh, people. Legally, and the child, usually these girls are totally unequipped for going out on their own and making their own way. So many of the Florence Crittenden agencies are continuing to have an aftercare service to get them started. To kind of transition. To learn how to shop, service. learn how to run a house, learn how to take care of their child, and uh, become a self-sufficient person. person. Mm -hmm. Has Have any of the agencies worked at all with the young men or boys that are connected with some of the family groups that you have contacted. How does that work out, if at all? It, it, it could work out, but it's very hard to find the fathers of these babies, and they do not come in. Uh, I believe uh, in the 50s and 60s, we worked very closely with, the flat, with the, not only the young man, but his family. Mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a concern for the girl, a concern for the baby, and both the families of these mm -hmm. young people. This does not occur today. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find the father of the baby and very hard to find uh, any of the young men who assume responsibility for the child. Leads one to wonder if some of the laws we've done to rectify one ill haven't created, created others. Created the idea yes. that the absent father should be pursued yes. because he needs to contribute with some kind of financial support. Yes has alienated, I think, some of these contacts. Yes. At the same time that while it has value in terms of making sure that the unapproachable father is brought to bear, um, brought to uh, his attention that he needs to help support, there is not work really being done to help parenthood develop yeah, exactly. in relation to a child some, some schools, with the young men. Yes, yeah, some schools are doing this, and there is a... There's a hopefully a more of an outreach to the young men because they are in many ways as needful as the girls. Yes, exactly. Would there be anything else you'd want to say about how, how one pursues to set up a community-based program so that all of the resources can be used together and have a sort of a disciplined contribution to make to the one child who, who at the moment is being investigated or helped because of a symptomatic breakdown in behavior. Um, to put it simply, it would appear to me from where I have been standing at the time that we do symptom treatment and that we have a hard time getting sort of a global view of how we put together what would be an environment that's helpful to a child from the very beginning of its, of its growth, and that we wait for some breakdown that is outside the family's capability or where some legislative law has been broken before we get involved. Do you see much 
hope for a more of a community spirited approach to dealing with children. This would be utopia if it could be achieved, I think. I think and so. the, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the private and the public sector could sit down together in small groups mm -hmm. and the referring agency, now all, in every case, I believe, would be from a government agency mm -hmm. working with an agency like Florence Crittenden, mm -hmm. there could be some kind of mutual support for these families. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Catherine. I think you've made quite a contribution in the presentation. Yes. Thank uh, you. Would you be available for a further interview or other information happy. if yes, you were approached? Thank you very much.